welcome to Butterflies of Wisdom, everyone. And by the time you hear this, it's Wednesday, and so as you know, it's the last week of me celebrating being 29 before I turn a really strange number with a zero behind a three. So um, <laughs> I, if you heard an interesting voice laughing at me in the background, that is my guest today, and I'm going to let my guest take it away because she is really excited about being on this podcast. Oh, and yours truly may be on her podcast either small on Tuesday or either on Thursday. So look out for that episode as well. And without further ado, I'm going to let Catherine take it away. When, as you said, it's an absolute honor to be on your show. What you've done is amazing. Your following is amazing. And it's just thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be on this show and to meet you and to learn about you. And I'm just, it's an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, For those listening quickly, I I will go quickly, I promise. Um, I used to be uh, an attorney, a prosecutor a million years ago. I had kids, I had three kids, and I stopped for a while because it was a little bit dangerous what I was doing, you know, bringing my work home a little bit was getting a little scary. So I thought I had to stop with the babies at home. It just, it was too much. Always going to go back. I always taught in jails. I always, I loved it. I always loved working with the kids. So I always assumed it would happen. But, you know, three kids, 14 years later, it wasn't that easy to go back. And no one was really looking to have me come back. So I wasn't quite sure how that was going to work. And I got a little frustrated with the whole process because, you know, it's hard sometimes to find out where to begin again. Who are you? Like, what are you good at? I, I don't know. I didn't have the confidence or the connections to start fresh. So I thought, you know what, rather than trying to reinvent the wheel, I was going to go out and interview women all over the country and see what they were doing and have them tell their stories about how they did it, steps that they took, things that worked, things that didn't work, and to sort of pay it forward, to share with others, either looking around to see what's available or those looking to do something exactly similar to what these women were doing as a mentor and a guide how to do it. And then to connect them, hopefully, so if I have further questions about it. For example, if someone has wants to get a podcast up, we could get your profile up on Morph Mom, and women could reach out to you and say, you know, how did you do it? Any tips? Any, you know, any signs of what not to do? So that's how Morph Mom started. And it really was um, relying upon the goodwill of women who were willing to share their stories, were not worried about sharing trade secrets, but really just wanted to help other people and pay it forward. And in return, women out there knew they could come to me and I would help them. I would would connect them with someone out there to help them get started. So that began about four years ago. Since then, and by the way, it's Morph Mom, M-O-R-P-H, morphmom.com. I now write for Huffington Post. I have a radio show. We have classes and we host cocktail parties around the country. And on June 26th, we're going to host our first non-conference conference in New York City where we're going to have panels all day long talking about any topic you could possibly imagine, ending with a cocktail party and a few speakers, a few authors are coming, and Chocolate's coming to speak about her new book, The Big Life. And if all goes well, we're hopefully going to bring this around the country. So when, when I get to your state, hopefully we're going to have you as one of our featured speakers. And it's been well, happened. that would be an honor. That oh, would be an honor. Be my yes, honor. I'll take, I'll take <laughs> your sample and use it on your website because people ask me all the time, how do you start a podcast? How do you start a radio show? They probably ask you, how do you start a radio show? And my advice to all my listeners out there who want to start what Catherine and I are doing is just do it. Just yeah. do it. Just get behind that mic and do it. I um, I have an Apple headphone stuck in my ear right now as I'm talking to Catherine, and that sounds pretty good. What I'm doing, you guys, is basically, even though I have a big fancy podcast mic, which I do use for my international guests, 
on Zoom, I um, pretty much do this podcast with an uh, Apple iPhone. And so if you, if you are afraid of my, if you are afraid of your own story and people have said to me, oh, my story's not interesting enough to be on your podcast. Why did you pick me on? I'm like, because we all have interesting stories. And so just do it. I love that. It's so true. And once you start, you'll see it, it is a little It's difficult, but there's so many women out there who want to help you succeed. We want everyone to do well. We want you to get your stuff out there. I mean, and look at when. Look what Wynn's accomplished. When did you have help when you started, or did you sort of figure it out on your own? I um, didn't have help. And was it like through researching Probably how you me started? as I just yielded myself because I didn't want you guys to hear me coughing. Thank you very much. So I did not have help, Catherine, and I um, – actually started this podcast way back when on YouTube. And so I said, okay, people are going to see me, guys, yeah, great. And it's all going to be well and grand, and I'm going to be a YouTube celebrity and make a bunch of money. Well, I'm not kidding. A fan who's a fashion stylist out of New York, Laura Madden, said to me, I want to listen to your po- I want to listen to your show, Wins Women and Wisdom at the Time. And she goes, I can't download the YouTube audio when I'm multitasking. And so I'm like, oopsies. There goes <laughs> my YouTube thing right after that. So then I um, researched and researched and researched and researched. And then everyone was telling me to go to Lipson, of course. I tried long talk. I tried everything else. Finally, I bit the bullet and went to Lipson, L-Y-B-S-Y-N, and that's my podcasting host. And so I'm proud to say they have not gone down on me. I, as of today, have 40 49,000 downloads of my podcast wow. all um, all the time. And I'm looking, you guys, to get 700 downloads per episode. So when an episode releases, I'm looking to get 700 downloads per episode. And right now I'm getting the average is between 100 and 500. So please, wow. please, 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 before, when you listen to Catherine's episode, when I wake up on my 30th birthday, yes, I <laughs> go, I'm turning 30, I would like to see my birthday wish come true for this podcast, and I have a couple birthday surprises for you guys up my sleeve. And you guys don't know about. So, getting back to Catherine and her um, her story, Catherine, what is your favorite book that you have either listened to or read, but it doesn't have to be a business book. It just has to be a book that you go back to time and time again. I think, and it actually has nothing to do with, with Morph Mom, I think it's To Kill a Mockingbird. I loved, because growing up, you know, I was a lawyer before and Atticus Finch, and prior to all of the stuff surrounding the second book, the very first book, and Atticus Finch just standing up for everyone, and I think it's, I would say, To Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah. And I know you guys can find that on Amazon, because they're still using them in high school and colleges. Catherine, I'm going to ask you to pick your favorite child questions. What has been your favorite interview so far that you have done? Of all the more fun, well, I'm going to say this one with you right now. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. Uh, this one. Although, just you're going to be biased. 
It's going to be my no. interview with you on the radio this week. <laughs> it's going to be. It's going to be. Yeah. That's right. Because you guys get to hear um, more of my incredible story. Even though you guys probably stuck with me uh, <laughs> enough now to hear bits and pieces of my incredible story. But it's going to be. And yeah. so, Catherine, what has been your favorite entrepreneurial moment? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, I think it's been, it was sort of in the very beginning when I was really scared about starting this. Because like you were saying, I had no idea what I was doing, none. And I was, I just picked up a video camera and I said, you know what, I'm going to start this website and I'm going to go speak to these women. And part of my biggest fear, and I don't know if it's true of other women out there, but it was a confidence issue. I was scared that people were going to look at me and say, who does Kathleen think she is? Like, she can't do a website. She can't start this multimedia platform for women. She 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 can't do that. And I was terrified about that and no one responding. And when I did my first interviews in California, I lined up four people. And I'd go on the plane, I'd get to the state, and I'd turn around and come back. And so I thought I had four interviews that day. But when I landed, the women said they were telling people about what I was doing, and I had oh, 15 boy. interviews that day or whatever it was that day. And it, yeah. that may be a little bit more, but it sort of – it grew totally sort of a grassroots way. It was people telling people, and they'd reach out to me, and they'd say they wanted to share their stories. So I would say that was the best for me because at least it validated – I was doing something right, that people did have the faith in me that I could share their stories and I could connect women and at least I was going to give it a shot and they had faith in me that I could at least try. So I would say it was it was the confidence and the strength that other women gave me about going forward with this. Okay. Now, organically, Lewis, so what would be your best tip for a person who disabled and who's bed bound right now and wants to either start a podcast or start a video show or do a YouTube platform, what would be your best tip? Well, I would say if they're interested in a radio show, they should reach out to me. Reach out to morphmom.com and I will help them get set up. Um, they can I can reach out to the, the company that I do it through, City World radio, and I, I will do anything I can to connect them with anyone who has a podcast up or a, a radio show. I, When I do my radio shows, I then put them up on iTunes podcast the next day, and I did all of that, like you said, sort of researching it. So reach out to me about the radio show, reach out to me about how I did the iTunes podcast, and I will give them anything I have, and I will help them in any way that I can. And you guys can reach out to me about the iTunes podcast, too. iTunes podcast, since WWDC, which is the world um, wide development conference in San Jose last week, iTunes podcast is changing their algorithms and hopefully making me a little bit more visible and hopefully making Kathleen a little bit more visible. But that since come in to some of you guys. So reach yeah. out to both of us on I on our website so you guys know how to find me and we'll get you guys set up. I do it independently, Catherine does it to a huge radio station. But as I as I end this interview and I know Catherine got questions for me, what is your favorite technology tool that you use on a daily basis? Okay, daily basis. I would say, you know, it probably, it's a new one. I, I love Facebook Live. That's another one that they everybody can use, too. I, because it's a radio show, people don't get to see the guests. So I would, you know, I post it. I post pictures on everything. I love Facebook Live because you can show what's going on behind the scenes while you're still conducting it. So while we conduct a radio show, 
I can Facebook Live it and people can see what's actually happening and comment during it, and they can post questions live. So while someone's watching the video, they can post questions and say, could you ask this? I also like it because when I do my interviews with women, I, we can Facebook Live the interview and they can kind of see what goes on behind the scenes. So I think Facebook Live, and I think Instagram has something, Instagram Live now too. I like these. I, I like doing that because it's immediate and it shows people things that you would not normally be able to share. I would say that's probably one of my favorites. So one of the, my favorites, Twitter, you guys. Twitter, I have yeah. a little bit of a problem with Twitter. It's my addiction. It's my most <laughs> It's my addiction. So, um, yeah. So, Catherine, where can people find you, and how can people get a hold of you? Okay, so the website is morphmom.com, M-O-R-P-H-M-O-M. Dot com. And that, by the way, it's all women. It's not moms. It started when I was a mom, but it, it, it's for all women to connect. I want everyone to know that. If you need to reach me by email, you can do morphmom, M-O-R-P-H-M-O-M, at gmail.com. And if you'd like to hear the radio shows, it's morphmom moments, M-O-R-P-H-M-O-M, moments, M-O-M-E-N-T-S. And you can Google that, and it should come up. And then for Huffington Post, it's actually under my name, Kathleen Smith. But if you put Kathleen Smith and Morph Mom, the articles will come up. Um, and I want to say, so hopefully when we're trying to get our time, hopefully that this week or next week, hopefully by this week, we'll have Win on the radio show. And you'll be able to get to listen live, Morph Mom Moments. It's live on Thursday nights, 7 p.m., and if you go to my website, you can click on the link to listen to it directly and get the phone number to call in. And then the following day, you'll get the link for the podcast where you can listen to it if you missed it. But really, and everything you, is on morphmom.com, is on the website. And if I, you don't mind me jumping in here, you guys can ask me anything live that you want. I mean, you guys can ask me. My life has opened a book. You guys know that by now. I wrote a book when I was 23 years old. So I've been pretty much open since I was 23 years old, open about my cerebral palsy, open about my work. And so you guys can ask me when we do the radio show, and of course I'll be promoting it heavily. And so just call in and ask me anything, and then you get a taste of Catherine's voice so you um, get a taste of her interview style, but before I let Catherine go, I'm going to let her ask me two to four questions that she's been dying to ask me. I would say, one, and I'm so, as everyone knows, on their own, how amazing Wynn is, I, I, I really do believe it's just an honor to meet you and to be honest and to see what you've done, and it's so inspirational. What was your motivating factor to do this, to share your story and to, through the book and through the podcast, what was it that made, that, that encouraged you to take the step to go out there and share the story? Well, I, um, I lost my mom when I was 23 years old. I since then have acquired a sensory stepmom who's, abs- who's absolutely wonderful, by the way. I, don't have the evil step sister or the evil <laughs> step mom. She's absolutely wonderful. But my point being is I lost my mom when I was 23 to meningitis. Oh. And so, yeah, that was a stop and smell the rose moment of my life. And yeah. so when she was in the medical way in this coma, I asked her, can I write a book on my life? And at the time I just didn't even know which book was going to be called. And I'm, she goes, yes, as long as you do it gracefully. So I'm like, oh, great. Now I have the permission from my biological mom. Let's do this. And so I'm like, oh, great. How do I write a book? And do you know it hit Amazon number one two weeks after wow. it came out? Not only, was, uh, not only were my friends, my family, my um, 
down the spine. They, um, they, people were asking me, how do you do all this with um, cerebral palsy? And yes, it could still be found on Kindle. Yes, it could still be found on Amazon up to the state. So please, 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 please go buy my book. For those of you who are just tuning in and have lived in a lock for um, many, many months, you do know I'm going back to school to get a journalism degree, fashion journalism to be exact, out of the University of, out of the Academy of Arts University in San Francisco. So if you go buy my books, my books will go towards a college textbook because even though it's Kindle, it's still not cheap to buy a college textbook and, you know, they cover the cost of a pencil with these telegrams now, and so yeah, and so wow. but they don't necessarily cover the textbooks. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing this oil campaign as to um, get me um, get my college textbooks all covered by my book. Wow, that's amazing. It's so and exciting. I'm also looking for a job in the creative field. As you know, I am slowly but surely stepping away from early childhood education. I'm actually retired as of May, as of this last month. I retired myself from teaching early childhood education and now now will be working with third graders and music, believe it or not. And so, and then I'm looking for a job in the creative field. So if anyone knows, including Kathleen, I would much appreciate that. I will put this out on the Morse Mom site to tell them, too, to share that. Yes. Yes. And, and, and I, so... Oh, I'm sorry. I just interrupted. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask you, too, and in doing this, what has been or has there been just one memory or one instance when you had an interaction with someone and it was so positive that you thought, yes, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. This is exactly why, you know, I was meant to do this. I hate to be biased, but I think the interaction we've had via text, we've had via um, email, we've had via every which way, I think, this is why I became a journalist. I've been a journalist since the age of six. I quickly discovered I had CP, and then I just wanted to become a journalist. And fortunately, I went into education in my early 20s. And, yeah, that's not working out so well. <laughs> and because, mainly because of the paycheck, which you guys yeah. – uh, know by now I can make more money publishing books and public speaking and um, being a journalist than I can teach you every, um, every year. Wow. Well, wow. isn't that astounding, though, so, that, that, that's, that that happened? That's sad. That's sad, and it's now. Yeah. So I um, – I know this is my calling. I know what I'm doing is um, what I'm meant to be doing. Yeah. Well, clearly you're meant to be doing what you're meant. I mean, you're meant to be doing this. You affect so many yeah. lives. Even what you just said, how many downloads you've had from your podcast and, and how many yeah. listeners who appreciate this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, I think you're an example to so many people in so many arenas. Just even the fact that you were able to get it started, like you said in the beginning, how do you do it? You just do it. Yeah. Well, it's been wonderful. And so we'll have all of Kathleen's information in the show notes, and we'll just see what happens with my interview. And then, as you guys know, I have the episode rolling out on my birthday. Someone else is interviewing me, finally. I just <laughs> have to do the upload work. 
and I have no idea what he's going to, what he's going to ask me. He's my co-host on Tuesdays. He hasn't told me what he's going to ask me yet for my 30th birthday episode. So you, um, you will see a couple of special things happening with the podcast in the next couple of weeks. I actually have, believe it or not, a dear friend of mine slash my biological mom's best friend coming on the podcast because, believe it or not, my mom and I were six days apart. So on my mom's actual birthday, um, 65th birthday, believe it or not, um, on June 28th, we will have that episode lonely now. I know what I'm going to ask you, and this person is very close to me, but yet she's a very good friend, and yet she um, won't hold anything back, yet, <laughs> yet you might hear emotions. <laughs> Emotions from her and emotions not from my end. I'm going to try my hardest to be the steward's boss. But um, you might hear emotions on um, her end. So that will be a Kleenex box episode, definitely. So I want you guys to keep sharing and keep doing all this incredible work you guys are doing in including Catherine, and including um, everything else. And please, 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 please get me to 700 downloads. I will not be checking until Friday, the 23rd of June, to see if that happens. But we'll see. And I'm super excited to be on Kathleen's radio show. I am super excited to share my story with Moss Mom, and I just want to thank Kathleen for being flexible this morning and making this work. Oh, and I want to thank you for allowing me the chance to come on your show, to speak with your listeners, to be a part of your world. It's thank you, thank you, thank you, and I can't wait to get you on that show. And we'll know soon when it is. And remember, everyone, you can call in live during that hour to speak to Wynn, to ask her any questions during that hour. Um, so we'll get that out to everybody um, ASAP. Yes, and we'll get that out to everyone ASAP. And we'll have all of, all of Kathleen's information in the show notes, and we'll get that out to everyone ASAP because when she gets me the link to promote, her radio show, I'll be promoting it on my Twitter, on my Facebook, on, well, probably not Facebook, but on my Twitter, on my LinkedIn. So, every, everyone, um, I want you guys to enjoy these next couple episodes, and let's make my 30th birthday rock. Let's <laughs> make the world and make changes for Fail the policy and make changes for all these parents who are struggling out, um, who are struggling with kids who are newly diagnosed with cerebral palsy. And if I say that one more time, I'm going to start crying with Kathleen. So that I am, that I do. But that last statement came um, from the bottom of my heart because I know how difficult. It is for a parent who has a newly diagnosed child and with any disability, including cerebral palsy. But um, medical technology has changed, but just go support. I tell you what you can do. Go support March of Dimes because I'm a March of Dimes baby. Believe it or not, I'm a March of Dimes baby who um, got saved from um, all the by all the great mental equipment back in 87. Now, granted, 87 and 2017, big 
stick, but um, without the incredible doctors and staff and children's hospital, I there's no way I would be doing this podcast, and it's all about love. So go support smart to dying. Go volunteer in your children's hospital. Go support moms, moms. Just go support all these solo entrepreneurs, especially those with disabilities. And I would like to thank you guys for your support. And this podcast has been generously sponsored by Kidder, K-I-T-T-E-R. And Kidder, you can post the tweet. They can post a tweet for you, either one, but they put the trending trendy hashtag so you guys don't get lost in the heat. And thanks, you guys, for tuning in. And let's make this last week before my big birthday somewhat successful for butterflies of wisdom. Thanks, you guys. And happy early birthday. Thank you.